And we are live, baby. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we are going to be talking about the recent advancements in AI, which are scary. Last week, OpenAI announced some rather large technological advancements in AI text to video. And frankly, I believe that this changes everything. Everything you're watching on screen now is all AI generated. Not real, it's all AI generated from a text to video prompt. Now we just type and create, baby. So OpenAI, headed up by Monsieur Sam Altman, have been making some leaps and strides in the world of AI creation. And they've just announced this new program called Sora, which they are only allowing a select amount of people to access. I think that's a very good idea right now. Do not put this out to the public just yet. <laughs> Let's put some safeguards in place. Now we knew this was coming. Last year I was at DNA festival with Adobe and I was interviewed by them and they asked me about the progress of AI and what that means and I said I don't think it will be long where we are just doing text prompts to video and it's creating a full video and I was telling them about how I think that increases accessibility to creativity that people can just be in their bedrooms they can type something out and they can create a whole movie a TV series in their living rooms because bedroom sounds weird it's a different kind of video but quite literally the capabilities that are on offer here are literally Endless, which leads me into the next section of this video. I want to open a discussion with you guys here to discuss the pros and the cons of this technological advancement, and also then an overarching conclusion so that we have a point of view on the matter. I'll cover what I think the pros and cons of AI are, but I encourage you to put your own pros and cons in the comments as well on what you think about AI and this technology advancing as fast as it is. Do pros and cons. Let's not just be like, I can hate it. The reason being is because I will see perspectives that you don't see and vice versa. You'll see it from your point of view and see things that I don't see as well. And then I wanna open this discussion. Then I'll come back with a part two of this video, taking into account the points that you guys bring up and when we know more about this program, Sora. So allez, allez, share your thoughts in the comments and let's get into it. The first pro that I want to discuss is accessibility. To date, if you want to create a movie or a TV show, you need loads of camera equipment or hardware. You need funding, you need locations, you need set building, you need transport to all of that. The barrier to entry is very high. There's lots of steps in between from creative idea to actual final product. So what AI text to video is doing is essentially smashing all these barriers to entry and instead bringing it straight from creative idea to final product. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know yet. We're gonna get into that later on, but we can't argue that it makes it easier to create something. So when I say in terms of accessibility, what this means is that someone who might have brilliant ideas, but just doesn't have the funding or is in a part of the world where they just don't have access to any of that, can create something still and put their art out there. I'm still at this stage a strong believer that the playing field will be on the creative mind that has come up with the idea to prompt AI to help it create, you know? I still think that the human creativity needs to be amazing and that's what will be rewarded. And yes, AI is gonna be the tool in there that's gonna help people put out more artwork or, or put out artwork quicker, but the mind, the creative, the storytelling, all that kind of stuff is gonna be the thing that we're gonna know and love. We're gonna, it's gonna be rewarded. Marvel stories are still amazing. Just as Christopher Nolan's stories are still amazing, they're displayed in different ways. The speed of creating things. Now you have your art form that is your art form and you like to take time with it and develop it and have a process around it. But what about the other things that are just go along with that? For example, for me, I do a lot of email automations with my newsletter down below if you need. And the art that I use in it, I've started using some AI generated art and it looks great. And I've slightly adjusted it and amended it to make it look how I want it to, or I've added things into it to make it look how I wanted to, but it's enhanced that process a lot. Now that's just an email. And I'm just using that as an example. My videos, for example, if I need a very specific kind of B-roll that I have envisioned in my mind, but I haven't yet flown out to a certain destination, got a camera crew, a film crew or whatever and everything like that, and the right perfect conditions to shoot the thing, 
Then it increases the speed of creation and allows me to get the art out quicker. It's playing a key role in the whole process of creating something. It isn't just the actual full thing itself. I would liken that comparison to when CGI came out for movies. And I'm sure that stunt crews and effects team will have thought, well, this is the end of our career and our job. However, both work in tandem or one or the other still, they're both prevalent careers. You know, you still have directors like Christopher Nolan who doesn't use CGI. But then you have full on movie series like Marvel, which are full CGI, apart from the odd thing. <laughs> I saw that meme once where it was like a camera guy in a Marvel movie and it was just him, green screen, nothing else, green screen, everything's made. <laughs> the next pro I wanted to cover is that mundane tasks are taken care of. We saw this when Photoshop came out with its beta things with generative fill, generative AI. So now when editing a photo, instead of spending ages trying to mask something out, you can just draw a box over it and generative fill and it will just make a new piece of the image to get rid of the old item that you don't want in there anymore. It speeds it up monumentally. Same with Premiere where it's coming out where you can just type in to find a sound effect and it'll AI generate a sound effect. You would have to have subscriptions and scour through that and find the right one to then bring that in. Now you just type and it will appear. It's a small part of the whole creative process that's being made imminently fast. Okay, so that's the pros. Now onto the cons of AI. Firstly, mass disruption and displacement. A lot of jobs won't be as needed. That comes with all technological advancements, just like when the telegram turned into the phone, the horse into the car. Someone commented on one of my latest videos on AI on my Instagram, talking about this, that when the camera came out, painters thought it was the death of art. However, it wasn't, it just brought out a new field. Painting still, an amazing art form. But it is a fact, some jobs will become redundant or they will be less used. So as creators, we must advance alongside AI. However that looks, it's not clear how that's gonna be yet, but it will become clear, I believe. Secondly, more people making more content quicker. Art is getting out there quicker and quicker each day. We've seen this with short form video, everything, etc. social media. Does that mean that there's more competition and it's harder to be seen? I would like to caveat this point with this. So will there be more people creating art quicker? Yes. Does that mean there's more competition? There is an argument for that. You as a person watching this now, you have multiple favorite movies, you have multiple favorite books, you have multiple favorite content creators, YouTubers, whatever. You have multiple. It's not just one person that you listen to and that is your absolute gospel. You don't watch anybody else. That's gonna be the same always regardless. There's a lot of directors out there. There's a lot of actors out there. You know, they're all making different things, but you like the ones you like because it resonates with you and that will be the same regardless. So yes, there might be more artists. There might be more people being able to create quicker, but you'll still just resonate with who resonates with you. The last con that I kind of wanted to go over here uh, and is quite the scary one I think is, will we be living in a digital world? Like because of how good this is getting, will we create a reality that is so similar to reality that we don't know the difference and therefore we can just plug in and be in our own worlds. It's a scary thought. It's like Ready Player One or something like that. Is that where this is going? I don't know. Are we already in one? Are we already in a simulation? Let's ask Elon Musk. But with that, it is a scary thought to think that people could be plugged in for the majority of their day, living a virtual reality life I, I just think that will increase isolation so much. It's quite a, I don't think I need to expand on that as an idea that much. It, we all resonate that that is quite a, a creepy concept. And so, like I said at the beginning of this video, with all those points considered, I want to just kind of hammer home one overarching conclusion to all of this. And that is that AI is here to stay. This is the worst it's ever going to be right now. It's only going to get better. And I see a lot of people on social media saying, boycott AI, don't use it, they hate it, pro AI, anti AI. I think regardless of whatever side you're on, like I say, it's here to stay. So learn how you can use it to advance as, cr as a creator. Use it as a tool in your arsenal to create bigger and better projects. Because how you use it in your creative process will be unique to you and your creative mind. You'll see it a different way than anyone else sees it. Just like all of us, We're all individuals with different creative minds. And like I say, please put your point of view in the comments. How, does, how do you think this applies to you? Then we can discuss and then we can do this part two, more things considered. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe. If you aren't already, hit the like on this video. We're, we're growing fast. I'm, I've just started posting here, so I'm very thankful for all the support from you guys because we are growing 
Like I said, this is like video three. If you want editing assets for your photos and your videos, presets and LUTs, they are in the description below. Alongside my editing masterclass where I teach you how to make content for social media. And my free newsletter is down there also where I share insights on all things creative. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Mwah. Bisous, bisous.